Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys for Socks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And today is one of those days where this channel is up to his goddamn name, okay? I am a dunce. I am slow at learning. I did another stupid mistake with my covered call strategy. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get, hopefully, Dylan can maybe save me. Maybe? Maybe? That, that I don't know. We're going to get to it. <laughs> Two stupid guys trade stocks. You know, once again, man, I, I've been hanging out on Wall Street bets too much, and I got my buys and sells all sorts of screwed up again. You know, it just you, you, you're it's supposed to like buy high and sell low, right? Isn't that how the market's supposed to work? That is typically what I've done in the past. Uh, well, 2020, that's what I did. Uh, you know, for for a second here, okay. So I, I love trading this covered call strategy, okay. Um, yeah. Right, wrong, I don't know. Over all the last like six years or so that I've been actively trading, it still worked out okay for me. Uh, mild brag here while I dislocate my elbow, trying to pat myself on the back. I'm up 34% year to date, okay? So, you know, it's still working okay most of the time, all right? Right. Um, what I did here is I, I sell monthly covered calls on a couple of my positions that I have 100 shares or more of, and one of them is Apple. You know, tried and true held this stock this like my, I think my longest held position in my account. Um, but on uh, it was November 17th. Uh, I'm sorry, October 24th. I sold the 1120 uh, 1117 Apple 180 call. All right, I collected two dollars and eight cents in premium basically on that transaction. You know, 66 cents is, is the actual commission on this because Charles Schwab does still charge you a commission on options trades. Uh, pretty small, That's annoying. Right? 66 cents. Uh, I sold it right about here. I sold that covered call at 180, <laughs> thinking like, yeah, we're probably not going to get there. And <laughs> then you just look, just look at this rip. <laughs> 9% of, of, in the interim from the day I sold it to now, that's how much it's up. It actually even had like a little lower, you know, you know kind of trough here. Uh, but 9% is the actual increase from the point in which I sold it to the current stock market price of Apple shares. Pretty wild for a company that's the largest company in the world, right? I am excited to go to the chart after this because I don't know where you are in relation to the 200 MA. Because you should never like, sell okay. a covered call right above that. Because it usually bounces. Ah. Yeah, that, that is interesting. That, that is admittedly not something that I looked at before this. And two, $2 per share is more than the typical. So I may have gotten suckered into that because it's typically like a $1.20, $1.40 I, cover, I earn per month selling Probably the strategy. Like so I may have chased premium a little bit too much and got myself bit in the face. Um, so. Now the call expired on you know Friday, this most recent weekend. If I haven't faced the dilemma, what do I do next? And of course, like an idiot, I doubled down on this entire situation. So I bought back the the call I originally sold for two dollars for seven hundred and I mean nine hundred and twenty dollars, a net loss of seven hundred dollars in that trade. And I resold uh, the same day. I sold the twelve fifteen call. I like to trade the monthly expiration. It's just more liquidity. That's why I picked these dates. Um, it's the third like Friday of every month. Mm -hmm. So I sold that one for ten eighty. All right, so I collected another two hundred dollars in premium. So where do I stand as far as like a break even price on this trade? Is kind of the question here. So I collected that ten eighty. I had to buy back the one for nine twenty that I <laughs> I had sold for two hundred eight here, um, and add in the strike price which was one eighty. So if Apple closes below one eighty three sixty eight by December fifteenth, then I would be in profit on this this kind of cluster of trades. Mind you, I've been doing this. For you know, pretty, pretty much monthly for several years now. Okay, and it's ripped my face off eh, two or three times during that time period. Um, okay. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it can be certainly pretty violent, like this most recent month. So, what do you think? Let's look, look at the charts here. That's what I want to know. So, let me zoom in a bunch here. I just want to show you guys where I got the support and resistance here, so you can see these peaks. This one right here is not perfect. Give it about a three dollar range, but that's the one seventy two. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So, what was the date that you did the 170? October 24th was the date I sold that. Look at that. Yeah, right about right there. on the 200 average. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That goes okay. against uh, that goes against my rule. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to know. I mean, sometimes it's nice to have rules that actually will save your butt, right? Yeah. <laughs> you you don't want to short into it's the strongest support. And usually if it loses it, a lot of times what will happen is it'll either bounce and then it could do like a little lightning bolt pattern where it kind of consolidates around it. Um, this obviously just bounced right off. So you're looking at a decent, I mean, a decent resistance at 193. It's not super strong. We don't have a lot of time up here this high. So this is not like a super strong resistance. I will say we are 
This is called the nine EMA. This is 20. It does not really mean a lot for long-term trading. These are kind of useless, but for short-term trading, the general rule is the higher you are off of this, the more likely you are to correct because it likes to hover along this line. So you can see it likes to stay near it, around it. If you're in a mm -hmm. positive uptrend, when it goes below it, it usually catches up quite quickly. So yeah, we're pretty high. The December 5th, you know, the, the hard thing is the December 15th thing, right? Is it going to be below yeah. this number? Hard to know, know, right? We, you talk about like uh, Santa rallies and how they start earlier and earlier as time progresses. So like we may be well into like a Santa rally phase already. Um, that, that's, that's always a, a kind of a, a gamble. No, that's, that's the right word for it. This is gambling, folks, okay? <laughs> a little bit. This is, yeah, kind of. This is your 100 moving average. So the interesting thing about the entire market is a lot of stocks, a lot of tech stocks in particular, have the same pattern, right? Whereas 100 and the 200 MA kind of narrow, you have a point of, are we going to go into a bullish or a bearish market? Right now, it's obviously too early to tell. I'm not going to make a huge prediction. Um, but the only problem is... You're, you said you have to be below 183? 183 by okay. December 15th. I don't know. 50% chance. That's what I'll give you. It's, okay. You, you have, it's going to be really close because your 100 MA, which it has respect, respected quite well in the past, as you can see, we have a lot of hits here, went up, then a lot of another kind of break here, another hit here is at 181.70. So yeah. it's right there. It's going to be close. And it's going to be climbing now because it's above it. Yeah, I, I definitely get what you're saying. I mean, it certainly looks extended to me on like the short-term basis here, but it's a question of, you know, how, how much of a pullback do you really see? It'll it'll be barely climbing because it's the 100. It's got to take yeah. in 100. And it's not the difference between the exponential and the small moving average. So these are the exponential ones. They move a lot faster. Are they put more weight on recent ones than last ones? Mm -hmm. Whereas the small moving average is just equal across. So the next day takes off the 100th day before. That's yeah, nice. yeah, understood. Yeah. yeah, all right. Well, we'll see. What do you think? Uh, kind of let us know down in the comments below. You feel free to roast me on this one because this is another stupid mistake. We named this channel for this exact reasons. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm curious to see what do you guys think. Will this work out for me, or am I about to get my face ripped off again? We'll see. Have a good one.